Hello, I'm Rene Latosa, and this is Bill Newman of the Latosa Screama System. And we're very happy today to be able to present our first tape in a series of many. This first tape is called Concepts, of which we built our foundation of the system. Bill? And this film was shot entirely on location at Langenzell Castle, the headquarters of the EVTO, the Eskrima and Wing Chun organization. Welcome. Martial arts systems, especially the Filipino martial arts, are not developed overnight. Development of a system takes time, effort, testing, and building around a solid foundation from which to work. Slapping a name on some techniques, adding a few extra twirls, does not make a system. The Tosa Escrima is not an overnight system. It has taken over two decades before Rene Latosa would put his name to the system. The philosophy behind Latosa Escrima's system is very simple. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. For example, a technique doesn't work by itself unless combined with the concepts of balance, power, speed, focus, timing, and attitude. When combining these elements, the outcome, or the whole, is far more effective than what would normally be the sum of the parts. This is the reason techniques as practiced in this system are only tools used to understand and enhance these individual concepts through techniques. The number of different techniques mastered by an individual doesn't increase his level of competency in this system. Until a person can make it work in any situation, it is not of any value. These are not principal bits of information until combined to create a solid practical fighting concept. The martial arts is an individual effort that teams your mental, physical, and technical skills. The Latosa Escrima goal is to produce a quality escrimador who can think creatively and react responsibly rather than a person with information overload.
the Tosa Escrima concepts. Balance. The concept of balance in the Latosa Screamer system is the foundation for many of the techniques, many of the movements that we do. Let's look at one of the concepts. Now, if you notice, the, the, the two people working here both should have the strong balance. One, the attacker should have the balance hitting to give this person the idea that the attack is real. Now, the attackers and the defender is basically the same in our system, so his balance is strong here, ready to come in. His footwork is in a triangular position to be able to reflect any motions that he does. His balance is on the back, his balance is on the side. The concept of balance is a, is a basic fundamental concept which we need for foundation in the Latosa Escrima system. And we'll show you how it works and we'll show you how to apply it. If you notice, the attacker must always have his balance, okay, and balance on all four sides, and because he has his balance, which means, in essence, that he has a strong attack, so we're not looking to, to hit soft with no balance, we need to have the balance, we need to have the effort to make the strike. Now, the person making the offensive movements is strong here because he needs his balance to come in and attack. His footwork is triangular, and it gives him a strong, basic foundation. Now let's look at this again with another offensive movement. As you notice on this one, the other foot is forward, but still you have the triangular positioning. The balance is still here, the balance of the attacker is still there. So everything is consistently in balance, whether you're playing, whether you're practicing, and whether it's real. These next exercises are drills, and drills to learn how to obtain balance, and how to get balance, and how to feel balance. Okay, we'll start like this. First thing you want to do is make sure that there's a, there's a balance here and a balance here. None of the straight arm, because when you have a straight arm, the balance will disrupt your total balance of your body. So you need to have the power of the elbows in here like this, and bent knees and body aligns. And when you push, huh, there should be a little bit of resistance here back and forth. So now, what I want you to do is the drill is to move back about three steps, putting resistance on, and then come back in, flip the right hand, huh? steady, steady, and then change it with the left, and come in with the left foot. So you have balance on both sides of the body, and he comes back in, steady. And then you can switch it to the center, where you can move the same way. So your shoulders are now balancing the body. With the, with the focus balance here. So when you move, come in, okay? And when you're done with this, you can do the same thing with the right hand, moving to the right and moving to the left, with the left hand moving to the right and moving to the left, and centering it as well. Come in, come in. Okay? And what this does is keep the pressure on the individual, whether he has a stick, or if you have a stick, and he moves this way, bang, and he moves this way. And what you're doing is keeping, keeping the pressure, keeping the center, and keeping your balance on the individual. 
This next exercise or drill is bumping. And bumping is, is the idea that you want to take the person off balance unknowingly and shock him into a position where he's never been before. So we like to use this exercise to make sure that our foundation is strong. And let's, let's try this. So first, the position, the person is very strong, very steady. And when I push him back, he's going to come back and get back to the same zone, the same pressure area where his balance is the strongest. So when I push, he comes back. I push him again, he comes back. Push him again, he comes back. Now, as he stays with balance, if I push him off to the side, he'll come back with his balance intact. Everything's still strong, and I go on this side of him, bang, he comes back, I come from behind, push, comes back, from the side, comes back. Wherever I push, he comes back to his balance, to me. Now, the second exercise is the same. However, this time he does not have his arms to use as balance. And when you come back and every time you turn and use your arms for balance as you're being pushed off balance, what it becomes is a is an area that someone can cut with a knife or or anything like that when you turn and use your arms for balance. So we practice this to keep our arms in and our balance strong without the use of our hands. So when I push, push back, he's strong. Push, strong. Balanced. Hmm. Balanced. Balanced. Now, the third one, he's going to have his hands like this, but his eyes are going to be closed. So what he does is now he feels the balance as I push without him knowing where I am. So close your eyes. And if I push him from here, he comes back to the point where the push was. Push here, comes to the center. Push here, to the center. Back to me. Back to me. Back to me. Timing. This next exercise is timing. And, and timing, we're going to use timing in stick hitting. And the first thing they're going to do is make contact with the sticks as they do a figure eight. And the second time they do it, is what's going to happen is they're going to off time the hits and create an exercise for you. So you have to watch very closely. And the third one is going to be very much of just off timing and using timing techniques to stop the power of the hit. And the next one after that is going to be being able that an individual can train himself to stop time whenever he needs to. And let's, let's look at what they're doing in the drill and you can follow along. Now he's off timing. Left to right. You notice the timing, it's broken rhythm and it's timing. This next exercise is based on balance and reading the other person's body. Now, what's going to happen is one person is going to make a move and the next person is going to attack that move but not touch it. Everything is going to be suppressed. Everything is going to be in, internal. So what happens is that the strength is built on body, reading the body, reading what the other person is doing, 
and how he's doing it, when he's doing it, when to move, how to move, and to just read the other person's body. As you see, one person is hitting, and one person is hitting the stick that's moving, but he's not going to hit it, he's just using the balance, and he's still projecting timing. As the person starts to move, he starts to go after it. So you're training to read the body. Now we're going to do it again, this time with the bladed weapon. Power. This time we're going to be looking at power. And power is basically the alignment of your body until you make contact with the other weapon or make contact with whatever object you're hitting. So power starts from the bottom of the body all the way up to the contact point of the weapon. And what, we want to, what you want to do is make sure that all the energy goes directly to the point of contact and to your subject. So let's try this exercise here. With the two sticks up like this, first thing that I want you to do is basically step in and make sure you have balance. Because balance is always going to be a part of achieving some sort of power. And if you don't have the balance, as we did the exercises previously, you will not have the body alignment and the concept alignment to have the power necessary to do Latosa Screamo. So, what I want you to do first is step in, make sure you have your balance. Okay, again, step in, make sure you have your balance. Now, the second thing I want you to do this time is step in, make the hit, and suppress it. Stop the hit. Don't make the hit. But make sure that this hand is this way, not out here. Make sure that your shoulder is not out here when you hit over here. Everything is aligned to this person. So when you suppress the hit, all the energy is going towards that person. So, I want you to do it again. You step in, make the timing hit, okay? Do it again. Make sure your energy is aligned to the person. Make sure your energy is aligned to the person. Okay. Once you get the feeling that your your body is aligned with your hit. Then make contact. So you don't have to make contact very hard, just to make contact like this. And then check your balance. Come in. Check your balance. Check your balance. Check your balance. What we're trying to do in this system is to isolate these concepts so we understand that each one of these depend on each other. So, as I hit again, watch my body alignment and watch as I hit. Now, once you do that exercise, then go ahead, start with the right foot forward, make sure you have your balance. And this time you stay in this position, and as you're hitting, you hit with the power and the bounce directed towards this person, not towards the weapon.
Now, after you get that far, what you're going to do this time, with the right foot forward, is as I hit, this person goes back. Back. And so this time, what you're doing is moving your power and your momentum forward as every time that you make a hit. This next power exercise in our system was developed to understand the power usage in both hands. And what we're going to do first is show where contact is being made with the weapon, and then contact is suppressed, and then contact is directly to the arm. Now, the idea of the exercise is to assure that the person focuses, looks, and has balance, and plus has the ability to obtain power in the exercise. As you see, the, the feed is changing, and contact is still being made with power. Now they're coming off without power, but still, the power is suppressed, and there's an immense amount of power in every one of the hits, even as he changes feet. Now as he goes, as they separate again, he's going to go for the arm. And whether with a stick or with a bladed weapon, these could be hits or they can be slashes. But every slash that we do, every hit we do in this system is powerful. adaptability. The second phase of the concept tape is adaptability. And adaptability is taking the foundation of power, balance, and timing and applying it to different efforts, such as offlining, distancing, attitude, focus, and, and other things like that. And so what we're going to do first is show you what the different exercises are to use when we're trying to practice offlining. And what we're going to do is isolate the idea of offlining. Okay? First, he's going to show where the target hits. And then at normal speed, they're going to make the offline. slowly. Good. Now hold this. Now, if you notice, this was the original position of this person. Now he's offline, which is why the reason why we call it offline is because he stepped away from the line. Let's try another one. First, show the target. Good. Normal speed. Good. Now slowly. Okay, stay there. Now now what you see again is he's offline away from the person, away from his direct line of attack. Okay. Now, let's see another one. Target is the center. And he's going to be able to move right or left of that center. Slowly. Not only do I want you to understand that the person is offline, but that he has balance, 
and he has the power and he has the focus and the distance to this person. Okay, let's try one more. Target. Again. This time slowly. Good. Now, but you want to make sure that you understand that there's still always balance. Even though he's offline, he has not come in directly, he's come in off the line, he still has the power and he has the balance, he has the focus directed to his opponent. Okay? All right. This exercise is about distance. And what we're going to do first is give you some leg stretches and then move on to using the weapon as part of the exercise. Okay, get ready. Slowly. Okay. This next exercise is also part of distancing. And what I'm going to do is show you how to take the distancing away from it while also offlining. Okay? So, first he's going to check the target area. Good. Go. Okay. Now, what you see, what has happened is that as he's coming down, I'm taking it offline and to the back. But in, you have to understand that in this system, Latosis, Latosis Crema system, is that whenever we go back, we're never back for more than a second. And we always come back in with the power, with the focus, with the balance of the other concepts that we're teaching you. Box. This next concept under adaptability is the box and the box system, which is a very vital part of the system. And what the box does is the, the person is going to be inside of this box. And what happens is he's protected here, he's protected here, he's protected here, and he's protected here. Now, this top portion represents what we use as the roof attack. This side is going to be our side attack. 
This side is our inside attack. This is our down attack. So, as this is a box system, it isn't a block. It isn't a blocking system. The box system takes this movement here and creates an attack with it. And once, once a student understands the box concept, then they can go on to V-line, which is another rather complicated concept within this whole arena of zoning. And then, once that's completed, then they go into developing what we call zone hitting. And zone hitting is basically not to go beyond the target, but to zone within a target, to hit within here and not over here. We always want to hit to the target, whether it's there or not. We're going to be hitting directly to that target. Okay? And we'll demonstrate this now with the box system, the V, and suppressed hitting. V theory. What we're going to show you now is the V theory. And the V theory basically is an interrupted strike. And what happens on the interrupted strike is that someone is hitting towards you, and which causes you to be defensive. And what you're going to do is take the defensive posture and make it offensive. By as he's coming down, you take it and go towards him. So we do not sit in a defensive mode, but we're taking the offensive mode when we're using the V theory. So what they're going to show you is basically just the, the box area and the V theory and the concepts that surround it. But keep in mind that you still have to have the balance and the focus, the distance, and the timing no matter what we do in this system, that is the foundation of this system. Zone. This next exercise is, is very simple. And what, what I want you to do is make sure that you're zoning when you're hitting. And, and the reason for that is because if you don't zone where you're hitting and you think that you're going to make the hit and you go beyond, what it does is cause an opening for you for the other guy to come and hit. Okay. For example, if, if I was going to hit the stick here and he moves it, move the stick, I'm going to end up over here. So what this system does is we zone the hits only to this area here. So if they take the stick away, we're still hitting. Okay? It's, 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 there's no problem in, in, in letting go. If he drops the stick, 
that the stick goes way over there someplace, okay? And we don't want that. So let me hit this about five, six, seven times and see how it, see the zone in this, right? So the zone is still there. We're still hitting where we need to hit. And as a person comes into the zone, that's when he gets hit. We don't follow the person as he moves from place to place. So slowly, just bring the stick in like this as I'm zoning. Okay, and that is what we want to have for zone hitting. Attitude. What we're going to do now is attitude. And attitude reflects the realism in the fighting. And what we want to do is give you a training device which gives you the outlet to release all the energy that you've been suppressing when you're doing drills and just techniques. And what we want to do is make sure that you're able to go after something full bore and not stop and use the aggressive power, use the momentum forward to make the hit, to make whatever you need to do work. And, and what we're going to do is give you a little bit of a training device in which you can hit the stick, you can hit the weapon, and then be aggressive while you're doing it without hurting anybody and also maintaining control of what you're doing and how you do it. Blending. This last phase, phase three, is blending. And blending is taking the first concept, which is the balance, the timing, the power, as the foundation, putting it together with adaptability of zoning, offlining, the box, the V, and other distancing exercises, and then putting it all together where you make sure that each one of those isolated movements are there. Okay, so when you do a when you do a uh, a roof attack, a side attack, a down a down attack, you have to make sure that each one of those concepts that we've done that were isolated appear in the in the technique that you're doing. So as we really don't do a lot of techniques, we do need the concepts to make the techniques work. And what they're going to do is first they're going to demonstrate the, the, the blocks and the attacks and, and the balance and the footwork and the timing. And then Bill is going to come in and show you what the higher level does. Okay? So go on.